All right, hello everyone. Um, I wanna thank HIPI for the invitation. I am thrilled, super excited to be able to share um, this project with you all called Tipos BR. And uh, can you see my screen? Do I need to share it again? Um, I believe so. You don't see my screen yet, right? I think you do have to share it. Okay. I do think you, I do believe you have to share this. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm going to close my uh, video so that you will focus on my presentation. All right, can you see it? Yes, we're good. Awesome. All right, so, um, so as I was saying, I, I wanna thank ATIPI for the invitation and um, I'm pretty excited to share with you all this project called Tipos BR, which is um, a spreadsheet that has information about typography um, published in Brazil over the past decade or so. Um, first, let me introduce myself real quick. So I'm a graphic designer. I was born in Sao Paulo and after my graduation, I started a project called Typocracia, Typographic State. And it's a project to promote typographical culture in Brazil through workshops, lectures, um, and events in general. Um, the, the main activity of this project is this crash course in typography uh, that was taught in universities and design studios. And I would, between 2003 until 2014, I would travel around Brazil, giving those workshops uh, and, and giving lectures and getting to know uh, Brazil uh, in the process as well. Another thing that was uh, cool about this project was the possibility to donate typography and graphic design books to the universities that hosted the project. So uh, I had a deal with the publishing houses and I was able to, to collect a lot of those books and donate them to, to libraries in the process. So this is part of the, the visual identity from the beginning of the process. At one point I started traveling with Hippocrasia, as I'm originally from Sao Paulo. So I created this form online and I was in asking people, would you be interested in uh, taking a typography class uh, if I were to visit your, your city? And then based on the, the responses I got, I started traveling and going to different cities. And then after a while, I got into this, uh, pace of teaching between March and August, traveling around Brazil, and then around September, October, I would travel to Europe or the US to visit uh, conferences like ATIPI. This is, was my first ATIPI in Prague. Um, here are some other photos. So then during those conferences, I would gather a lot of information, new information about typography, and I would try to go to other places like the type museum or exhibitions or what have you. And I would gather all that information and we'll like dissect that and translate it back to the, the project in Brazil. So I'll go back, starting doing traveling again, uh, going to new cities, uh, promoting the project as much as I could and traveling every time that I would go to a city for the first time, there will be an extra class oftentimes. So then it was like, these are some of the, the people who attended the, the workshops in when I, whenever I was going to those cities for the first time. And uh, yeah. And then I will go back to ATIPI and other conferences, collect information and throw it back at the project. Between 2003 and, 2003 and 2014, there were over 150 classes in 
uh, 18 states of Brazil. I was almost completing the map, but it was based on where there was uh, graphic design uh, programs being taught for the first time. Um, 2013, Tipocracia celebrated a 10th anniversary with an international conference called TPC 10, and we invited a bunch of amazing speakers uh, from Brazil and around the world, and that was also an opportunity to get friends together in Sao Paulo to celebrate. This is a photo of the first class of the post-graduation program in typography uh, that was offered by Senac Sao Paulo. And, uh, and I thought of this image, this was around 2013, around the time Typocracy was celebrating the 10th anniversary. I was teaching uh, in this program and I also helped create the program along with Marina Shakur as an invitation from Senac. And, and I remember that during this program, there was like a, an attempt to create like a Wikipedia of Brazilian typography. So that was, that, that was an assignment with the, with the students. And each of the students would pick a, a Brazilian type designer and would do a, a page about this type designer, would interview this type designer and do a page about it. Unfortunately, this project fell through um, because, um, you, I mean, it, it, it was like the URL expired and then uh, other professors didn't pick up on the, the idea. So unfortunately, this was now lost in, in the web. Um, these are images of the letterbox exhibition that I um, organized first in Brasilia, but this one was in Sao Paulo in 2015. After Tipocracia celebrated the 10th anniversary, um, shortly after that, like in 2014, I moved to Madison. But then I went back to Sao Paulo to organize not only this exhibition, but also I was in the committee that organized a type by Sao Paulo. So that is like a, one of the nicest photos of everyone, everybody on stage. Uh, so that was October, 2015. So yeah, so, so that was like a quick introduction. Uh, now going to the, the topic in here. So after I, I moved to the US, I started working on spreadsheets and doing a lot, a lot of spreadsheets for, for just, for no, not no reason, but like while I have the time, I was organizing information online. So for example, this is an image of the Atipo, uh, the conference that we have in Brazil, type conference that is, that's been going on since 2008. These are some of the, the logos of the different editions that took place since of, over this decade. And then I was like, okay, let me, create a spreadsheet and list all the speakers, all the editions, where they took place, who did what. And I started like, uh, kind of like trying to organize that information. Um, by the way, uh, there will be another edition of the Atipo this time online. We've been doing uh, online edition of the Atipo since last year. We did two editions so far. There will be a, a next one next Saturday. And this is like the, the list of speakers. Um, okay, back to lists and my spreadsheets. I created another spreadsheet, like combined, like listing books published in Brazil about typography, type and typography. Uh, oftentimes those lists will start because of like someone is asking something on social media. It's like, do you have indication of a book or something? And then I was like, okay, let me try to list that. And then this is an example of a, of a, a graphic showing the, the amount of publication each year since 1998 until 2017. And this was to give an idea that I was talking to students while I was in college, which was around this four years, there were very few publications in Portuguese about type. And then this changed a lot over the past uh, two decades. So then we see here not only um, Robert Bringhurst, Alan Lupton, Eric Speakerman books translated to Portuguese, but also Priscilla Farias, Claudio Rocha, uh, Boogie uh, books in Portuguese, and also Como Criar Tipos, the uh, Laura and, uh, uh, oh my goodness, or the other name, Jose Scalione, and um, 
yeah, it'll come. But anyway, just wanted to give an idea to to people how publications were mounting over the the past uh, years. But then there was very few in the turn of the century in Portuguese. Then another list was like type events. So that that list type events that were taking place around the world and just putting them on a, on a spreadsheet as well. Or uh, this one is a list of type professors in Brazil. So I went on social media and I was asking people who taught you typography in college and where, when, and for how long. And then I was just combining that information and creating this list of everyone who taught typography or like the people who answered the, the list, but there, it's pretty uh, complete sort of saying the, the list based on that uh, this survey that I ran in 2016. There is also this other list about Brazilians who studied type design abroad. So earlier, Yomar was saying that he was proud that he was the first one on uh, to to learn to to go abroad to to KBK, and that is his name right here. We have Christian Cruz, Fernando Melo. So like they are all and and those. I mean, one of the things that attract me to to compiling that information is that I try to uh, draw connections between them. So, for example, what is the influence of uh, Brazilians going abroad to study, type, study typography, and then what is what are the next steps of of them, like either becoming professors or entering the type design field as professionals, or like so. And and this is one way to understand what is going on within the Brazilian type scene. But then, by far, the the most popular of my spreadsheets is this one that is called Tipos BR, Bitly slash Tipos BR. I invite you to, to take a look at this uh, URL. Unfortunately, I can't see the chat. I'm, I'm looking at my screen in full, so I don't see anyone. <laughs> but, uh, but if anyone could type in this, uh, I would invite you to take a look and, at the, the spreadsheet because I am curious to hear your thoughts about where um, this uh, spreadsheet can go and, and like what, what are the, the information that is collected there. But let me talk a bit about the spreadsheet. So shout out here to Luc Devois and his website about the Brazilian type scene. And not only this one, but he, like his website, the ONS, Not and Fonts, it is such a comprehensive, like it is a huge encyclopedia. He's like uh, gathering information about type from everywhere in the world. And he's doing that like daily. It is it is massive. I haven't gone through all the content about Brazil that he has on his website, but like that was something that we would discuss in Brazil, oftentimes on mailing lists or in now WhatsApp groups. Is like how come there is no place for people to find out? I mean, the only place for people to find out about Brazilian type is this website from this Canadian researcher. So, but and, and but it's still it's impressive. But but. The thing is that Luc Devroy collects everything. If a student published a poster or so, it will be on his list like uh, the next day. It, it is something really, really impressive. But it was an inspiration, like trying to come up with something that was uh, that that would be like a, a resource for people about uh, Brazilian type. So um, this is the list, um, the the spreadsheet, and. As I was promoting the, the spreadsheet, so I started like building the, the spreadsheet like better in 2014 when I was already here in Madison, kind of like far away from everyone. I was like, hmm, let me see if I can use my free time to start compiling the, the type that was published in 2014. And then I decided to promote that online. So I went on the Facebook group for, of Typocracia and, uh, and I was asking people, can you vote on your five favorite typefaces of 2014? So I created this survey uh, and this was like, like a poll and, and this was like a promo piece. So I wanted people to vote on the, on the typefaces, but I, I was like, okay, so I couldn't tell people, just click on each link, consider which one is your favorite and then vote. So then to make things easy, I was just like showing the, the typefaces as a single word 
on this uh, image. And I was like sharing them. So people would look at this image and like, like just vote, you know, like just pick your fa five favorite. Uh, it is not like a comparison for quality or anything. It's just a, a way to encourage people to uh, get to know Brazilian typefaces better and just say, oh, I, these are the five I like the most. And then, so we would do that on Facebook as a, like a Facebook poll. And, and I ask people just vote five at the most. And then we will see live people voting and that would, that would last like three weeks or so. And then people will be encouraging each other, oh, vote for my typeface and all. So that would like get the, the community like uh, paying attention to, to the, the typefaces that were published the previous year. Uh, another thing that I would do to make things easier for this um, election was to create a Pinterest board with images of the typefaces. So then I will share the link of Pinterest. Say, go to the Pinterest board. You can see the images really easy, and then you can vote on your favorite. And and then I started doing that like at every year, like at, in January, December, or January, I would collect all the information I would ask people like, do you remember any other typeface that was published in this year that is not on the list? If you do, let me know because I am compiling them for the, the voting, uh, for the poll. And then I would, I would build those images that would gather all the typefaces. But then of course, uh, as the years went by, it was getting harder and harder to do that because there was more and more type being published. Like you see the list was growing of, of type during the, the poll and all. So, and, and this is the example of 2016. After a while, uh, I also started producing images with the, with the five winners. So for example, this is 2016 and, uh, and these were the, the top five favorite Brazilian typefaces according to the, to the poll. And, uh, and yeah, so that was like, it was, it was something fun and, but it was also keep me uh, in sync with like, uh, I, I wanted to keep the, the spreadsheet updated in order for that to work as well. This is 2017, so it was like, ooh, this is like growing. And to a point that would be really, really hard to, to keep track of eventually. This is exactly what is happening these days. Uh, these are the winners for uh, 2017. And, and it's funny because of course, we like th there is a lot of people who are like voting on the typefaces that they like the most. But there are those people who are like convincing friends to vote as well. Oh, go to the website and vote for my typeface. And then sometimes you see a typeface like, hmm, I wonder how that typeface ended up in that top five. But but anyway, it was it was fun. Uh, no no matter how. Um, Here's another one. And this was probably the last one I did because it was getting out of control. And there was also this pandemic uh, in, the, in the process. So that was, that was 2019, yeah. And then 2020 was, uh, was, was no good for me to do that. But then in, and then during the, during the pandemic, I, I had, so I, I've been doing that since 2013, 2014, after a while, um, in, actually, in the beginning of it, Ricardo Esteves helped me out compiling the information for 2012 and 2011. So then, like in 2020, I was like, wow, there is like almost 10 years of type uh, produced in Brazil listed on that spreadsheet. And, and I remember that um, Flavia Zimbardi went on Twitter and she was provoking people asking, how, like, do you know any... Uh, Brazilian women who's a type designer and she was like who how many Brazilian type women do you know and I was like hmm so I thought of that and then I decided to highlight on the spreadsheet all the all the typefaces that were uh, designed by women and and then I, I highlighted those and I created this post saying over a hundred typefaces by uh, Brazilian female type designers and that was like this uh, post was shared a lot and the access to the, to the spreadsheet spiked. So like everybody was like, what? There is like over a hundred typefaces done by Brazilian women. And, and then people were like super excited when I sectioned the, the information of the, of the spreadsheet. So now I was like, okay, so 
I think it's about time to start adding some tags and, and starting to organize better that information. So I created those tags at the bottom. Uh, so there was like this tab, actually. Not, there was tags and tabs as well. So there was a tab for women. So then you see here the, the tabs, uh, male, female, text, um, dingbats display. So then you, you would have all of them listed here. So oftentimes to be like, oh, can you, can you give me a tip of a typeface done by women in Brazil? Like, yeah, sure. You just go on that tab and you will find at least from the past decade. Uh, this one was for custom type. And this one is like also uh, something that I was listening. So it's not only retail typeface, but if there's a project of a custom typeface, then I would uh, collect that information as well. Um, this one is about text typefaces. So like sometimes you want to do a book or something it's like, hmm, can, can we use a Brazilian type for to design this book? Oh, let me see. And, and people will text me, Henrique, can you give me a, a, a tip of a good Brazilian typeface for text? And I was like, hmm, yeah, here, take a look at this tab. And they're like, oh, nice, thank you. So then you have the link, and some of them are proprietary, but others are retail. Uh, this one is for dingbats also something that uh, we, we have a couple like uh, good examples in Brazil as well. So I was just like expanding on the on the spreadsheet and lately I've been creating statistics of that information. So trying to understand how many projects done by women, how many projects per year, how many projects each month. I was just like I, I, I'm in the beginning of this process of like combining the information of the spreadsheet. And, and trying to get more info out of that data. So I, I chose two sections of the, the spreadsheet to, to like, just to, to show like some light and just to, to give you examples of it. The first one is custom type. Custom type, I think, is a, is a good way to measure the, the growth of the, the typographic scene in Brazil. So I'll, I'll show you some examples from the past decade. This is the typeface for Rio 2016, the, the Olympics, Summer Olympics that took place in Rio. This is Fabio Hagen and Fernando Caro. Uh, they were working for Dalton Mag back then in 2012. And like, and, and that was like something really, really important. Uh, seeing a, a type made by Brazilian type designers like in the in the Summer Olympics. Um, this also is this is Petrobras, uh, Fabio Hag, Fernando Caro, Marconi Lima, and other uh, type designers from Dalto Mag. This is 2013, and Petrobras is one of the largest um, oil companies in the world, and also in Brazil, one of the largest companies in Brazil. So then, once you start seeing um, typefaces done by Brazilians in the media in like in our in our with the with the companies that we are used to that is something that encourages people to make type as well this is Unimed um, a health um, company in Brazil and this was done by Edu Wilson Coan from Do Type this is 2013 and that is and this is the second time that this company invests like pays for custom type because they had a previous custom type done by Claudio Rocha and Tony DeMarco. And then they updated, like they, they hired Edu Wilson to create a, 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 a system, a typographic system in there. Um, Wall, which is uh, online universe. This is a, a news portal in Brazil, the most popular news portal in Brazil. This was done by Christian Cruz along with Marina Shakur. This is 2014. So, like, when you have a, a news media portal like Wall with a with a custom typeface and done by Brazilians again, something uh, that stands out, and and they've been using that to this day, and it's so um, expressive. So, it's like, it is it it, ha it is part of the identity of Universe Online. Latin from the uh, Latin American Airlines, done by Daniel Sabino from Black Letra. By the way, shout out to Daniel Sabino. Today is his birthday. Sabino, feliz aniversario. Um, so this is also an, an, an impressive project. Sabino was involved with the, the, 
the new Latin logo and also this um, type family that has uh, a lot of weights, a lot of variations. Globo Tipo, designed by Rodrigo Sayani from Plau, and this is just like the, the biggest TV network um, in Brazil, and they are uh, using a custom typeface um, like done by Brazilians as well. So a really, really impressive uh, project by Plau. Another one by Daniel Sabino called Echoes Type. Um, so this is 2018 for Natura company with for cosmetic products. Uh, this one by Fabio Hag, Fabio Hag now with its own company, Fabio Hag Type. And this is for Go Suns, the, the flight company. And it has, I guess, 56 fonts, uh, 56 styles. It is a, it is a really impressive uh, project. And this one is so fun. Uh, for Canal Brasil, uh, done by Sayani, Carlos Minho, and Daniel Escudeiro. Uh, they, it was published by Plow. And it is the visual identity of this TV network, specialized in Brazilian movies and Brazilian content in general. It, it is like it is animated. They are using variable fonts to to create the animation. And like I, uh, I mean, I, you should definitely check it out. The Canal Brasil on Behance or other, because it is it is a really really fun uh, project. Vigor Brasil by Diego Maldonado and Thiago Reginato, published by NotF. Um, this is a color font uh, based on calligraphy. Thiago Reginato was the calligrapher, and it has four styles, and it is, it is also really, really beautiful. And it was like everywhere on, on like Brazilian, promoting the, this Vigor uh, yogurt uh, right after Big Brother Brazil, that was one of the members. So it's like, it was really, really popular too. This is a photo of um, Dia Tipo 2010, we call it Dia Tipo Christmas, because it usually happens in December. That was used to be the name uh, in 2010. And here we have Fernando Mello, Christian Cruz, Fabio Hag, Fabio Lopes, and Claudio Rocha. And, and this goes to show, like, during the Dia Tipo events, it was, a, it was something like every time we would come up with, like, the like debates and like we will discuss like can we make a living from type design in brazil and this is 2010 so back then fabio hagi was working for dalto mag uh remotely like working from his home in sapiranga rio grande do sul and fernando Mello was already on fontsmith i guess in, in london but other than that like we we didn't have the activity like like it spread out in in brazil and it was like whenever People interested in type will get together at a at an event like the Atipo. They would be asking those questions in there. So uh, this is Edu Wilson Kuan. This is 2013 during the the TPC 10, the, the conference for the 10th anniversary of Tipo Garcia. And Edu Wilson gave a talk. It's on YouTube, and he was like, "What is like to work as a type designer in Brazil?" He was uh, he was over a year uh, when when he made the shift. Like he he was like, "Okay, now I'm going to." plan and and work only as a type designer so he quit his job at an ad agency and he was like super generous in explaining in this talk like what was the steps like how he how he was approaching um retail type faces and working with my phones and like what was his plan so but that that is only to show that like less than a decade ago this was also something that people were like, is it possible? Like, like it was like something like worth like uh, learning about. And these days is like a no brainer because we have like fast flash forward to fast forward to 2020. And Ed Wilson is working with Fabio Hagi and Hick Bayer and Anna Leidner in the Fabio Hagi type. But not only that, Ed Wilson still has do type uh, and Hick Bayer still has harbor type and they publish their own typefaces. But it's like, it is a, uh, it is a completely different scenario. So that's why the uh, bringing this up on custom type. This is one of the, the graphics, two of the graphics about custom type. So you see here on the top, the amount of custom type over the years. 
uh, and you see how the, the increase in here on 2021 and and just and and like I updated the graphics like this morning and then be, like this morning there was new custom projects published by um, Plow and Black Letter and I was like ah I have to update it already so now it's already 18 so it is it is growing like um, really fast which is which is like great news and here we have like a distribution of those typefaces by foundry between 2011 and 2021 so like who have published which founders have published most custom type done by brazilians you see dalton mag is in here because the petrobras and the the rio 2016 were published by dalton mag while hagi was working there with fernando caro but uh, but then the other founders are brazilian ones and then the other part that I wanted to highlight is typed by women and non-binary uh, within the within this uh, spreadsheet. I just wanted to point out that uh, the spreadsheet is still hasn't uh, categorized non-binary. It's only women. I apologize for that. This is something that I still have to do, but it is just that it's not as easy uh, to categorize non-binary. Sometimes you have to ask people, and women is just like easier at first. But still. Here are some examples. Uh, this is more by Sophia Moore, published by Latino Type. This is 2018. Um, a really um, large uh, type family, 27 variations. Uh, Sophia is really productive in, in type design, like with, among uh, Brazilian women. This is Vinila by Flora de Carvalho, beautiful sans serif, published by Plau. Nowadays, Flora. Uh, has um, her own studio. He, she's no longer with Plow, if I'm not mistaken, but that was published while she was there. Uh, this is Frances by Flavia Zimbardi and Fedra Charles. Um, it was published by Undercase Type and it's available on Google. Uh, it's from last year and it's, it is probably the largest uh, typeface that we have uh, in, in Brazil because it has 108 styles. Uh, taking advantage of variables, uh, fonts too. So it is, but it's beautiful. I really love this project. I, I use it with my students when they create digital type specimens and they and they have a blast with it. Uh, this is Bork by Luisa Leitenperger. She published Bork by Harbor Type through Harbor Type uh, this year in April. And she was at uh, the Atipo X in August talking about this uh, this project too. So this is the the statistics for the stats for Brazilian type designed by women and non-binary per year, and and then you look at it is like wait, but what what happened here in 2011? Like well, you you can see a growth, but like in 2011 there was like a lot of types. So what and then what happens is that there are two uh, type foundries listed in the spreadsheet, which is Intellecta Design and Pintasugo Prints. And they are, they produced a lot of typefaces and they kind of like, uh, they, they are like the outliers on this, on this trend. Uh, so for example, this is the list of like typefaces by women and non-binary uh, between 2011 and 2021. And you see like this large production by Erika Jung, and there is also Isa W and Shirlene, they are both from Intellecta. But what happens is that uh, Erika Jung uh, is from Pintasilgo Prints and along with Ricardo Marcin, they, they are the authors of all types by, um, uh, by Pintasilgo and they publish since 2009 and they, are, they do that like every two, three months they have a new type published. Uh, so it, it is massive. So like it doesn't reflect the the average uh, production in type. So sometimes I have to go through those numbers, and of course there is a lot to be done still. But like if I run the same stats without intellect, for example, you see the change in here. And if I if I take out not only intellect but also pentasilgo, then this is the actual uh, trend. Like here you can see better when you take the outliers of the of the statistics.
And these are some of the other statistics uh, in there, but so, some of those are like way simpler. So for example, like these are custom projects by year that we, we shared before, but like how many types are being published by every uh, by year. So then like, for example, 2020 was the most productive year. Uh, I don't know if it has to do with the pandemic or else, but like this was the year that they published the most. And you don't see, you, you don't see like a, a growth like that there are like ups and downs in here but there is like it, it was the the year with the most type published and then for example there is a there, like these are typefaces and these are uh fonts that were published by year so like i was s counting the styles of it so like there is a growth and then much like in here 2020 was the year that most fonts were published and then combining type and fonts you can have like what is the average amount of fonts per family that is published. So like these days, there is an average of eight uh, fonts per typeface uh, published. And so there is definitely a growth in here. Uh, so here, like the foundries, number of typefaces published by foundries since 2011, uh, typed by women, we saw it already. This is like type published every month. So like what are the months in which it's published the most? So like you see here, October, March and April, like when you go to July and December, they are like the lowest along with May. Um, so yeah, so some of those numbers you say like, well, what, what can you get out of that? Sometimes you don't get much. In this one, I am trying to compare the percentage of type for text every year versus non-text. So then it's like some like 2011, 2012, only six and 2% of the typefaces published in those years were for text. The others were like anything else, display, dingbats, whatever. And then you see, sometimes you see a growth, like so 2016, like the either there were more type for text being published or fewer types from other styles being published. And like, of course, those are numbers that needs to be refined, but is, um, it's a start. It's like it is. It is like starting to like a. I, I treat the the spreadsheets like a sandbox, and I try to combine things and see where where it goes. All right. So what's next? Um, one day, uh, Cadu Carvalho uh, reached out to me, and he was like, "Hey, Enrique, I was doing this workshop about creating websites from a particular database, and I decided to work with your database. I hope you don't mind. And I created this prototype. And I was like, oh, nice. That is, That looks fun. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with me. But it was just like the, the wireframe of, a, of an idea. Then the other day, Guilherme Vieira reached out to me. He's like, hey, Enrique, uh, I was looking at your database i use that a lot to pick brazilian type so i created this prototype of i have this idea and i was like hmm, interesting so why why don't we, we we talk and so i i reached out to both and i was like can we do something about this so like let's form a team here and and see if we can can do something because i'm, I'm no programmer and i was like i have the spreadsheet but i don't have the time to to expand on the project so then I, we we started a talk this year and we are like trying to find a way to to turn the spreadsheet into a website, some like something with the with the proper interface for people to to research about uh, Brazilian typeface. These this is like a prototype uh, that that they developed uh, this past November. Uh, this is like a homepage, so like having like some links on the top, like trying to choose between serif and serif display, like popular links, uh, popular styles, and, and just like listing the, the, the typefaces, who are the author, like trying to use the, that basic information from the spreadsheet in a more interesting way, more visually appealing. This is another page like presenting uh, a particular font. And yeah, so this is the, some, some of what's coming in there. But at the same time, I want to ask you all. So like, I know that at the end of the talk, like the moderators will be like, oh, do you have any questions for me? I have questions for you all. Like, so I want to hear from you, if not now, later on the, on the, 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 the chat room. Um, so what do you think of this? So like, uh, I'll be curious to, to understand if those, I would love to know if those numbers match 
in other countries like Portugal, Argentina? Do you see those trends as well? Is like is it growing everywhere the same way? Um, where what else would you ask to that uh, spreadsheet? Like how? What are the other features that could be implemented on a project like that? Um, we created a an account on Instagram and Twitter called Tipos underscore BR. There is nothing there at this point. It's like empty, but like we plan on use those uh, accounts to share information about the project. You're welcome to, to follow them. Uh, the links to this presentation, essentially all those bitlies, uh, my spreadsheets, I gathered them all on this link. It was on the on the bottom of the presentation if you were paying attention and uh and yeah i want to i want to thank you all for sticking around this friday night to or saturday morning for some of you to to listen uh to this presentation you've been reading pacaembu by alvaro franca and felipe casa prima from naipi foundry that, that's it thank you all Thank you. Um, wow, pardon me. Aaron, do you want to pick up some questions? Or does Henry and maybe the audience ask the questions? We'll, see. well I'm just I'm, I'm curious if the audience has questions. I think the audience should be participating, correct? Am I? Mm. Anna is asking, when did you start the list of studying typography abroad? Anna, that was probably around 2017, 2018. Uh, also, one of the one of the reasons for creating a website and wanting to to share that information is because I want more people to see the list because this like while like chasing custom type is something that can be like almost like a complete list. I I, I have no hopes of having listed all Brazilian typefaces, like if I haven't gone through Da Font or Creative Market or even uh, Luc Devois website. So there is a lot of things to cover. So eventually I want people to reach out and to like fill a form and be the ones who are adding to that uh, database, not only me. So, but, but that list of the people studying abroad, I think I started in 2018. No. And um, in relation to that question, do you have collaborators currently that are helping you with this list, or is it just you who's doing this? Um, updating the spreadsheet is only me, uh, but of, of course, I'm constantly reaching out to people on social media and like on on online groups, just like for people to to keep an eye on what's going on and see like, but like. Adding, adding to the spreadsheet is, is relatively simple like the but of course it is it is it is getting more and more uh, content coming up so as I said one of the reasons to to gather the team to try to create a website is to find a way for people to add the information themselves eventually okay are you finding people are finding you more easily now? to um, say hey that we have this coming up or do you have to still seek it out more um well no i mean like it, it is not like people reaching out to me directly but for example they would use the typocracia's group on facebook to promote to share they push the new face so then it's like oh here we are i just released this font and it's like okay so then I, I just get the information they are not sending it directly to me but they are sharing in the in spaces that we are uh, looking at. So, okay, John Barry just posted a question. As I looked at your well-conceived, well-organized, and well-designed spreadsheets, I wonder if you'd be willing to help out with organization, organizing information on the history of A Type I. <laughs> Lift up your hand. Um, it might be a great way to present some some kinds of historical information. So this might be something that if you are interested in collaborating with John Barry, it's up to you. So John, I'm throwing this talk. out. To, yeah. yeah. We, we can talk for sure. I, I would Your love to be a square time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, I, I imagine if this method works, this is something that other people can crib off of, you know, from for their their own kind of regional use and stuff. I mean, is this something you would want to collaborate with others and branch out and create a giant thing? Or yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. Okay. I mean, the the only reason why the the spreadsheet is is not like public for anyone to add their own information is because in in my mind is going to be chaotic for me to keep track of like if something is gets deleted or altered and i'm like so that that is the only reason by we can come up with an interface and like an online form and then we can filter that then definitely this is the, like the the best way to go like um makes sense um so anna has commented thanks henry amazing work all spreads used presenter are in this link um what's the best way to add info so you've just answered that question best way probably is to send it directly to you am i correct yeah exactly reach out to me uh like soon once we have that website up there will be like a form in that website for people to send information but like so far you just text me and then I'll, i will definitely add information to it and you can use any social media for that fantastic and you posted the links earlier so if you if people yeah. are in uh no you did not did you no no here's the let me just yes please post the, the link in the in, on your screen or in the chat yeah. for people to copy. Put it in the chat. It's called linktree slash typocracia. All the links for all the spreadsheets are there. Fantastic. Okay. Um, and your contact information is there as well. Am I correct? Okay. Um, do we have any other questions specifically geared to this? I found it fascinating. And I also liked um, how you broke it out by gender. By the way, just my own. <laughs> That's one thing yeah. that um, we notice that uh, women typographers are a rare breed. They're pretty fabulous, and I really like the fact that you broke it out because Marina yeah. is a. And, and we and we ran we ran a survey. I didn't have the time to add that to the presentation, but uh, we ran a survey last month. Uh, asking Brazilian designers uh, to fill this form about how they consume, how they use Brazilian type. And, and two of the questions we asked is like, do you favor um, Brazilian type faces over others? And I think over 40% people said, I try to favor them. So it's like, so they, whenever they have a chance, they try to use a Brazilian type face on a project instead of a non-Brazilian type face. So then it's like, there's got to be a way for people to to find out more about Brazilian type faces, and uh, so yeah. So then, and I, I think that there was also there was also another question asking if you favor um, what was the like if you favor type faces designed by women, LGBTQ, and all. And I think the percentage was is a little lower. I think it was like twenty five percent. But still, it's like if you have that information filtered and people are willing to prioritize typefaces done by women, we need to give them a, a, a easy way for them to find out that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. I know a font stand, I think they tried to categorize um, and give people suggestions. I don't know, if, did my fonts of any of the other distributors maybe tried to implement those sorts of categories? That would be, it's kind of interesting. Um, Cause yeah, the whole national, you know, national pride and kind of uh, trying to support you know your fellow citizens at school I, I, exactly i mean yeah. when you go to my phones and like you, you gotta you have to search for like the word brazil or any <laughs> like there is not like a, a place where you just filter show me only type designed yeah. by because you have the founders you have the type designers who might publish uh typefaces from a different founder so there's like some other yeah. uh like uh like specificities in there to to understand as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, some comments. Great database. Winky mm -hmm. base. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Mar. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments or questions while we're still here? I, um, I'm not. Oh, do you have any other databases that inspired you? 
Um, well, Anna, for sure, uh, Fonts and Use. Fonts and Use, I think, is a great example and a source of inspiration. While we were uh, developing the prototypes, we were like, okay, so we were discussing the, the structure of it. And I think the, the Fonts and Use, I think, is like the, the main reference for us. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Are we going to let everyone go? Everyone could go to the hangout room. <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe. What do you think? We can, we can definitely move to the hangout room. All right. Thank you so much for your talk. It was very inspirational and, um, a lot of information to digest and thank you for all of your links and all of your hard work. That's a lot of work you've done. Thanks, Eddie Myron. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> John Barry, if we don't hang out together, we shall hang out separately. Okay, John. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't wait, I can't wait for A Type I France. Just counting the, counting the months. <laughs> we will be there. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, please join us in the hangout room. Uh, I believe Aaron and I will be joining you there about seven o'clock. Am I correct? I'm going to take a small break, maybe grab some dinner, maybe not, but we'll see you there. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.